Okay, brilliant. So I'm Jenny from Stonebridge Community and today I'm being joined by the lovely Michelle here. And I've been here since four years, four years working here and I love living here and Jenny's lovely to be with. Thank you Michelle, I'll pay you later. So I did a cooking class on a Wednesday, a Thursday and a Friday morning and Michelle here was in my class as well as some other people. Sandra, I know that you're in my class, give us a wave. And it's lovely to see so many other faces on here that I recognise and other faces that I don't recognise and hopefully meet you in the future. So today we're going to make three different types of smoothies. We've actually prepared two already and we're going to be doing um, a little bit of a quiz to get us going. So what I'm going to do is just move myself away from Michelle a minute so I can take this really hot mask off and then I'll tell you a little bit about why smoothies. Bear with me. kind of Zoom session I'd like to do and it seemed quite quite obvious really that we do a smoothie. I have one every single day to start the day with. Most people here in Stourbridge will see me with my beaker in the morning and so yeah why are we going to do the smoothies? So firstly they can count towards your five a day and um, the Public Health England suggests that that's what we eat as a recommended amount of fruit and veg. They're really quick and easy to make. They can help you to lose some weight. They help with digestion. So if you have any problems going to the toilet, then it's a good thing to have in the morning. Um, they're delicious and tasty, and depending on what you have in them will depend on the taste of them. They can help your body to detox. So if you eat a lot of cake or chocolate, so like myself, I love cake and ice cream. So a smoothie is a really good thing just to help you know, get some fruit and veg in your body as well. Uh, they can also um, build your muscles as well, because smoothies have a lot of fibre and a lot of protein in them. Um, they can help to strengthen your immune system. So if you're feeling a little bit run down at the moment, then great, have a smoothie, and that'll help you to feel a little bit better. They're a really good source of energy, again, because they're full of protein. So, and also that little bit of sugar that they have in them as well from the natural fruit. So that would be really good as well to give you that boost. And also you'll see me as I drink them in the morning because that helps my brain to get into gear, ready for the day ahead. And they're also just really good fun. So anybody can make them, young, old, doesn't matter. Just put in as many ingredients as you want. Okay. So, so, first of all, we'll start off with a little game before we turn over to Michelle to see how she's chopping up the things that we're going to do. Because I want to know if you know your potatoes from your bananas. So, we play a quick true or false game. So, you can keep your thumbs up for true, or keep your thumbs down if you think it's false. So, we'll just do a few. Okay, so people should eat five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Is that true? Is it false? Four, four, two. Michelle thinks it's true. Yeah, well done everybody, that's true. And that can be a mixture of fresh fruit, tin fruit, frozen fruit, and I'm going to show you some different types of things in a little while that we're going to be using in our fruit smoothies. A bit more of a difficult one. Tomatoes are a type of vegetable. True or false? Oh, oh, we've got some mixed answers going on here. It's actually Whoa. false. That's right, Michelle. Way, well done, Phil. Well done, Alex and Deborah. Well done. So, yeah, they are a type of fruit. Okay. Fruit juice and baked beans can count as one of your portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Is that true or false? A can of baked beans and a fruit juice. Yeah. Well done, everybody. I can see some people having a little think about it there. Well done. Good, Phil. Good. <laughs> okay. It's recommended. Oh, and Michelle's got her thumbs up. She knows the answers too. It's recommended that we should drink between six and eight pints of water a day. Is that true? Or do you think that's false? Or. Oh. 
So I can see that Alex has got that right, Sarah Fishburne's team there. So that is actually true. So you are meant to be drinking six to eight pints of water a day. And one of the nice things about smoothies, well done for those people that got it right. And one of the nice things about smoothies is that we can actually get our um, water intake partly through the fruit, but we can also get it from the water that we're gonna mix it with as well. So, and one more question, strawberries, not one of my favorite fruits, are the only fruit with seeds on the outside. Is that true or is that false? Now have a think about all of those other seeded vegetables and yeah, or oh, Alex, you're looking a bit stuck. It's actually true. true. They are the only fruit with the seeds on the outside. Right, so well done everybody. If you can give yourself a good clap, you all seem like healthy eaters to me. <laughs> Very good. So, fruit smoothies. Like I say, we're going to be making three of them today. We're going to be doing um, a strawberry and banana that Michelle has actually prepared earlier today. But we're going to be telling you a few facts about the vegetables that are in those and the fruits. We're going to be doing a banana avocado blueberry um, smoothie and that's mixed with milk. And that's what Michelle's going to be showing you what to do today. And we've also made an apple, spinach, mango and pineapple juice. Now, some people say, oh, spinach, mango, um, spinach, kale, not sure about that. And from what I hear when I talk to people about smoothies, there's usually two things that put people off. One is the colour. And how I try and explain to people in the class is if you've got a painting of a beautiful rainbow, all done in different paints, but then you mix it, it always goes like a browny, grainy kind of colour. And that's kind of what happens with fruit as well. So you have all those different colored fruits, but when you mix it, it will go to, you know, a greeny kind of color. So we'll show you that in a bit. And the other thing that sometimes puts people off fruit smoothies is if they're too thick. So if they are, I would just recommend that you put some milk or some water and a bit of fruit juice in with that as well. So to make fruit smoothies, you can use a selection of things. So you can use fresh fruit like so. Um, so here's a bit more fresh fruit or you can also use tin fruit so if you um, haven't got as much money um, or you you know can't get to the shop to get some uh, fresh stuff you've usually got a tin of um, things like peaches or pineapple at the back of your cupboard so you can always use that as well um, I sometimes like to add things like nuts or seeds to my smoothies as well um, Bananas and avocados are always really great in a smoothie to thicken it up a little bit. And what I really like to use, and I think Michelle's a convert to these as well now, are frozen bags of fruit. And I get these from Aldi, they're about £1.30 a bag. Um, and they do these literally in all different flavours. So you can get blueberries, raspberries, pineapple, this one is strawberry and banana. And the one I actually really like um, is this one, it's a green smoothie. And this has got spinach, kale, mango and apple in it. And this is actually a really good one if you suffer with diabetes. Um, because obviously this anything um, of the green leafy vegetables are much better if you've got diabetes. So this say, is a really good one for that. Um, also as well, you're going to need a mixer to mix that with. So I either use something like orange juice, pineapple juice, um, you know, to use grapefruit juice. Um, you can also use milk, whole fat, semi-skimmed, or if you're vegetarian or um, vegan, you could go for some soya, some almond milk as well. Um, and also as well, if you have got a tin of fruit, and it's preferably not in the syrup, but in the juice, you could also use that as well. And two other things that I always keep in my freezer are just a lemon and a piece of ginger as well. And if I feel that I'm getting a little bit of a cold or my head's starting to hurt or my chest, then I'll just put a little bit of these into the smoothie as well. And that, that really helps. Feel, does that make me feel better? It does make me feel better, Michelle. I always find that lemon, honey and ginger are one of the best things to pick me up on in the morning. You can also have things like herbs as well. So you might want to add some peppermint into that. Basil is actually quite nice as well in a smoothie okay. as well. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I tend to do is I keep an ice cube tray 
and I would grow a lot of vegetables. So I'd take my spinach and the kale from the garden, fill up my ice cube trays, and then I'll just keep them in the freezer then so for as and when I need them. them well. Yeah, I'll do. I freeze those too, and then I can just use that as well. So um, a little bit of a fact sheet um, all about diabetes that I can send out to anybody that might want to have a look at that. And that's got a few different recipes on as well. And um, that also says about things like eating um, green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, sweet potato. Now, that's a funny thing and something that you wouldn't usually have in a smoothie. Um, but that is actually full of vitamin A. It's full of fiber. Um, it's got a lovely texture. And it actually makes your smoothie quite creamy as well. Maybe we could try that one, Michelle, then in another one of our sessions. So I'm going to turn the um, screen around now. I'm going to put my mask back on. Um, and Michelle's going to prepare for us. She's chopped the avocado while we've been talking. And we're going to chop the banana and then we're going to put that into the blender. Okay, so I'll turn you back round. Chop the avocado and now I'm going to chop the banana. I'm just going to move the screen a little bit so you can see what Michelle's doing there. I love having smoothies. Smoothies are good for you. They're really good. Okay, some people that come to my practice um, have smoothies on the morning. And often people are saying, oh, I'm not sure about that. But then when they actually try them, they seem to really enjoy them. So you give it a go at home as well and see what you can come up with. So, Michelle, I'm going to be now that we've been on the avocado. Should we go for the blender? Yes, please. I'm going to pull up the little bit nearer so you can see what we're doing. Okay. And I'm going to pull this a bit closer. Now, before you pop it in, um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about it at the end of itself. So this one is actually a tesla blender, um, quite a big length of one. Um, and you'll find that they generally come with either a glass um, jar or a plastic one. I actually prefer the plastic because I think they're a little bit safer. And on the bottom of this, you'll see a little red lock and a green lock. So when we put it on, make sure it's into the green position or else otherwise, boof, you'll have it going up in the air, which we have had happen a few times in class, which will make some bit of good fun. So we'll see if that happens today. <laughs> okay, you won't pop it in with yourself. And we're also going to make this today with a little bit of water. Um, if I'm not, we won't use water, we'll go for the milk. Yeah, we'll go for the milk. With banana and avocado, you sometimes find it does go quite thick, so we may need to add just a little bit more milk as we go. So on the top of your blender, you usually have one of these things that pop in like that. So as we're doing it, we can see how thick it is, and we can add some more milk through that little hole there if necessary. So pop your blueberries in, Michelle, and we're going to be using the frozen blueberries for this. So while you're doing that, you can get your milk. That's your finisher. Beautiful. You just stand around a little bit faster. And then you can add your milk. A little bit more. Let's try that now, okay? Okay, so if you pop your lid at that point. Make sure it's in properly. That's it. And then there's two settings on the blender to on ours. We've got setting one and setting two. So to start with, we're going to put it on setting one and then up to setting two. So it's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute. And I say we may add some more milk as we go. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I think that should do it. Um, because all the things are pretty much frozen um, and thawed already, so it's all quite, you know, it's not icy at the moment. So we'll pour it into the glasses. 
I'm going to have mine in a little bit, but Michelle can try this one. Okay, so if it's a bit thick, let's pop it back on the blender and we'll add a little bit more milk. You'll be able to see when you're making them whether or not it's too thick or if it's too thin, and you can just gauge it for yourself really, what, what how you want it. Yeah, that's better. Sometimes as well, with this particular smoothie with the avocado, banana and blueberry, occasionally I do like to add um, a little packet of oats to this as well in the winter time and that makes it a little bit thicker. Thanks Michelle. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I'm not going to have mine now, but I have mine in a little bit. Nice. That one's out. Yeah, that one's out. Okay. So, the other smoothies that we've made today for you. So, that's that lovely bright purple one that we've just done. And do you want to go, Michelle? You talk about these. So, that's the show. So, that's the strawberry and uh, banana. With uh, apple with orange juice. That's great. And that one's a really nice one again to start the day, or if it's a really hot day, it's just nice and refreshing. That one's nice as well. Now, this other one that we've made, this is the one with the kale and the spinach in it, and it looks a little bit peculiar. And we've also mixed this with some orange juice as well, but it works equally as nice with pineapple juice too. And we've got some more. And we did add a bit of water as well to that one, yes. Now this is the one that Michelle was a little bit worrying about because it was so green in colour. That one's not there now. So it's really, really, really nice. So, and I think it'd be lovely to hear what you're making at home and the different types of fruits that you've been using in them. So I think what we'll do is, um, and obviously as and you can see now all those like different colours, Aren't they pretty? They're just really beautiful. So what I want to do is just tell you a few little facts really about um, vegetables and about some of the things that we've used in there today. So I'm going to sit back around the other side of the table again now and I can take this off again and then you can just hear, hear what I'm saying. Okay, thanks Michelle. We're going to be drinking lots of smoothies all evening now I think. <laughs> to go and give some to some people. So I think to start with, could we have the PowerPoint still for the one that was just made? So that was avocado and the banana. Let's start with that to start with. <laughs> so, so I just want to tell you a few little fruity facts really. So say if we could have maybe um, banana or avocado to start with or even blueberry. Would you? Oh. <laughs> I don't mind reading them out, Phil, if that's easier. Okay then, we'll start with strawberries, Phil. We've made a strawberry smoothie, so that's just fine. So, a few interesting fruity facts then. So, strawberries are actually a member of the rose family. Not too many people know that. I didn't know that. Didn't you, Michelle? We learn something new every day, don't we? Yeah. On average, like we said in the quiz, there are 200 seeds um, in every strawberry. Um, strawberries contain 91% water. So like I say, if you are making a smoothie with them, then just bear that in mind that it will go too thin otherwise. Um, strawberries actually have a lot of vitamin C in them and the vitamin C content is actually nearly as high as in an orange so they're really really good for you and they also sur um, survive in a range of conditions all around the world. You can get beautiful little tiny strawberries called alpine strawberries that, go in, that grow in um, alpine regions um, and they're really lovely because they carry on flowering all the way through to like December, January kind of time so they're really lovely. So I think if we go for banana yeah um, now bananas so we've used in a few of our recipes today and they're this real staple in my smoothies. I tend to have them most days in mine. 
Um, so an interesting fact, bananas can be found in other colours. They don't have to be yellow, they can be red. But we do know that. Yeah, yeah, they can, Michelle. And bananas contain around 75% water, so not as much. Yeah. So they would go, um, so obviously they do thicken things rather than thinning stuff out. Um, bananas um, have a really high nutritional value and they make a really good healthy snack. Um, one thing that Michelle said earlier on, is a smoothie better for you than having normal fruit? Now I would say no to that and always try and eat normal fruit when you can. Um, but if you can't, eat lots of fruit then this is a really great way of getting your daily intake um, so bananas have lots and lots of fiber in them um, and that fiber can be extracted from it as well or taken out of it to make clothes and to make rope and things as well I didn't even know that. yeah they have multi-uses um, India is actually the largest producer in the world of bananas and when I was there they did little tiny bananas they were really miniature like this but full of flavor yeah, and also a banana is not a tree, it's actually a type of herb. I didn't even know that one. So there we go. Um, and I think, Phil, do you think we could have a look at um, avocado if possible, please? Thanks. Okay, so avocados um, are native, so they grow in Central South America, and they actually are found in there since 8000 BC, so really, really old. Um, old vegetable and they're actually said to be one of the most nutritious of all of the vegetables as well. Um, the major producers of them are the United States, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia. We'd have real difficulty growing them here in England because it's just so cold and um, so they do need a bit of heat behind them. Uh, avocado is a great source of vitamin B which helps you fight off disease and infection so at this time um, while we've got this virus going um, smoothies are just a fantastic way of getting all those vitamins into your body and there are actually over 500 types of avocado in the world I who just thought that? that yeah who just thought that so um have we got one there for blueberries as well please Phil seeing as we've just done a lovely blueberry smoothie too with Michelle. So blueberries, really, really great for snacking on. They contain no cholesterol, they contain no fat, and they're really, really low in calories as well. They're great for your skin, they're brilliant for your heart, and they're great for reducing blood pressure as well. So all vegetables will all have a medicinal and a culinary use as well. Um, blueberries make a fantastic snack for people with diabetes. And they also have really high levels of antioxidants. So if you are trying to detox, then they're brilliant for that as well. Okay, so how are we doing for time? A couple more minutes. Shall we um, have another quick game to, to, to end with? And then, um, oh, a quick recap as well of the things that we've put in. So the banana, blueberry and avocado smoothie. So, first of all, whatever fruit you're using, make sure you give it a wash. You don't know what it's been grown in. So, and then with the banana and avocado smoothie, Michelle washed the blueberries. She cut the avocado and the bananas. We've put it in the blender and we've whizzed it up. And like we've said, if it's too uh, thick, add a bit more milk or a bit more water. Pour it into glasses and enjoy. And we've also got here two ideas. Um, for the other smoothies that we've made today, so the strawberry banana smoothie, which we used approximately 10 strawberries, one banana and a half a cup of fruit juice. But again, add or take away how much you want, depending on how many people you're making them for. Um, in our blender, it holds between four and six, um, so that tends to be a good amount. The kale, apple, mango one, which I say was fantastic for the diet, people with diabetes, I use a half a mango, one banana, a half a cup of fruit and an apple um, and just a handful of spinach or kale and again the same way, wash it, stick it all in your blender and whiz it up and away we go. Okay, right then, so if we've got just a couple more minutes for another couple of questions or should we go back to saying goodbyes? Okay, a few more questions then. So, Oh, cucumbers made out of 95% water. Is that true or is it false? So what have we got? Thumbs up for true, thumbs down if you think it's false. 
Oh, bit mixed. Okay, so it's actually true. Cucumbers, 95% water. Okay, so again, brilliant if you want to thin your smoothie down or um, if you want to add a bit more of that refreshing taste, particularly good for in the summertime. Um, carrots are only orange. Is that true or is that false? Okay, false or is that true? Okay, it's actually um, false. You can get carrots in all colours. You can get them in purple, yellow, black, white. <laughs> black, Michelle, but you pull them up and you would think they were oh, rotten, yeah. wouldn't you? So, the, our carrots were actually found in Afghanistan to start with, and they were purple. Um, so there you go, another little interesting fact. And one more, fruit smoothies it can be an easy way to nourish your body and your mind. Is that true or is that false? That is true. Yeah.